It worked. Hey, how's it going? It's all done. Built the whole van. Nah, I'm just messing with you. The, uh, yeah, I'm just playing around. So, in this uh, YouTube, you're going to see heater channels. All the little fidgety things that I've got to do to get the heater channels just right in this. And this is only part one because I don't want to go into extremes on a four hour video. So, I'm trying to cram it down to two 30, 40 minute videos. Um, so, check out the key for van build. And let's see what I get into this time. It, um, yeah, it fell on the, onto its, yeah. So, um, it happens. I just want to say thanks to all my new subscribers. I just passed 500 yesterday on this thing, so I'm really excited. So, keep sharing with friends. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And watch this thing become a really cool Kiefer van. Uh, it's not going to be old either. We're going to do some modern touches down the road. But... Uh, speaking of down the road, uh, my red light's back to green, so I gotta go. The sketchiness behind me, remember, don't try this at home. Um, you know, I know I'm at home, but do this at your own risk, because I'm not taking a risk for it. Your risk. Let's see what shenanigans I get into to get this thing to fit the heater channel. Don't mind this. Just you didn't you didn't you didn't see that. The bug is propped up different now so that I can get the heater channels off. Why are those birds are loud? But because I propped it up different, I screwed up. Nothing I can't fix, just wow, that might be an issue. Once I get the heater channels ready, I can fix all that. It's definitely braced a lot. I have the heater channels, yay. They are really nice. Danks, great brand, thanks to a VW guy up in Missouri. Really awesome guy, I've gotten a lot of parts from him now. Came, ended up with the pans from him. Threw a big swap a while back. So the plan is to get these to fit that. Bolt the bottom bolts in. I'm gonna have to modify this one spot for the seat rail for that. That ain't nothing. It's bottom both sides, I'm good. Once I've done that, I can pop those in place with the bolts. I've looked underneath, they pretty much all line up, so I'm not too worried about that. I have most of the hardware from the disassembly. I am going to get brand new hardware once I get closer to, like, heavy modification. But this guy over here is doing this stupid split thing because I've got it balancing where the heat channels aren't. On the nose, and on the back where I cut off. So of course it's gonna droop in the middle. The thing is almost non-existent in the middle. <laughs> yeah. I thought about just fixing piece by piece, but the more I looked at it, I'm like, I'm like, oh look, that's good. Maybe that and that. That's it. And everything else was like, oh crud. It is eaten up. That one's actually not too shabby. Passer side, yowzas. So the plan of attack is, now that I've braced it with an old bed frame, because I got lots of metal like that, I can pick up the entire car with this. I already tried it. It moves a lot. I picked up the whole car. So it's just enough to keep those doors from really buckling the roof. Um... Once I get those guys on there, and these removed are really pretty, that thing is going to, whoop, focus, there we go. That thing is going to roll back underneath here. I'll probably do this in the garage part. We'll roll back underneath here, 
and I'll gently lay it down and then close the doors and adjust to my heart's content to get that thing all fitting those heater channels and then weld it in place. Seen it done like that a couple of times on various websites, various uh, YouTubers. So that's my plan of attack to get rid of the gap that is way too big. Rough fitting the channels. First rough fit, I got 99% of the metal out of the way and I just wanted to see where I'm at. Now we already know the car is ever so slightly pinched at the roof line, you know, like it's bowed in the middle up. So I don't think I'm gonna worry about this lining up yet. And then this guy, is the one I chewed up by accident, not knowing how it worked. And then this guy, I did much better than after I learned how it worked. And there's a lot of rust, of course, that'll be placed, but I'm gonna get the heater channels in before I replace that panel, because that's just skin. This side actually looks really good for the back, but it is slightly pinched. And I can't quite get it all the way up at the moment, but that's obvious. Like, I'm not super scared of that. That side, the front doesn't go up all the way, but that's, there's a little teeny bit of metal up there from the old heater channel I didn't realize right in that corner. And then the rest of it actually lines up pretty good. Um, I'm gonna chop off that little lip of the, I guess it's called the carpet channel. And then I need to do the same on that side. But that guy right there pops right in there. This guy's a little pinched in from us forcing the doors shut the other night. So the other night, my good friend Steven came over and we worked on like game plan and we also realized that the doors need to be shut. So we forced the doors shut and put a strap to hold them in place. Once the things on the pan and heater channels, my mine and his theory is that this door will go back to fitting perfectly and this door might need a little bit of smidgen, but that corner right there where the hinge is is torn around the metal but look at that it is super cool looking the heater channels are starting to go in place it's gonna be really cool really really cool that's gonna be a i'm just awestruck that i got this far i'm like really excited so woot woot this is uh, starting to come together. My goal is it's, it's mid-October. You'll probably be seeing this in November at the rate I'm going for videos because the first one just went up recently and the next one will go up probably this later this week. And so you're probably four or five videos behind right now. And by the time you're seeing this, I would have already gone further, of course. Yeah, baby. And sitting here all day. <laughs> Earmuffs, lots of tools. I'm pretty sure that I've used up that blade. I've definitely got my money out of that blade. It's time for a new one. I kept telling myself, one more time, one more cut. Next thing I know, it's that tiny. I'm like, okay, time for a new one. And don't worry about all that. Like I've said before, this part's not going to exist. And this part I'm going to try to repair. And then on the bus floor is going there instead. And these arches are gone. Because that's the bus part. This whole thing will be a bus part. So you'll be able to look back and it'll be the back half of a bus and the front half of the car. Quick test fit of the heater channels. I only put three of the bolts underneath them. Man, leaves, a little bit of water. Unfortunately, it means it's time to move this whole uh, 
whole project indoors, so I guess that's what I'll be doing later this week. That's why I want to get these on here, so I can get this set underneath that. And then it'll be a roller again. And then these, where they're at, will tell me where to weld them to that. And then I can adjust the doors and all that stuff after I start getting tack welds in. But fall is hit. Trees are naked. And my uh, project has suffered for it. Because it is currently, what is it? 43 degrees outside. Now, I'm not a person that is annoyed by cold, but it does make it difficult to work on metal, especially. Um, you know, your hands get cold faster. At least that's my opinion, even with, even with gloves on. So the next step is to move this under the body. Here we are in a sketchy moment. Do not try this at home, people. I don't care if I am at my home. I take my own risk. I'm not going to be responsible for yours. I'm just making sure, like, very sketchy there. This little tab of metal needs to clear this wheel. And same on the other side. So, we're going to find out. Bring you back right after the, uh, either it works, or catastrophe. Let me know below what you thought it was gonna happen. Cause I don't know yet. It still sits like that. There we have it. I did not settle for catastrophe. Lowered it back down a little bit. Bowl hole almost aligns, just a smidge more back. I actually think the whole thing's rotated this way. So I'm gonna have to like smidge it. But it is really, really, really close. Oh, look how beautiful that looks. I mean, minus the leaves. As soon as I clean them off, they come back. The trees are almost empty, so it won't be much longer. But yay! Heater channels are almost back in place. I've seen this done like 100 different ways on line. And the easiest way I found that I think after watching a bunch of videos is to lower the car in place and then weld the heater channels in. So the plan is to go from the front firewall because that is a definite. That can't change on the body or the pan. That is, that is impossible to change. The back end is going to change because the back end is getting chopped off. The part I'm leaning on right now is going bye-bye. So the plan is to weld that uh, fire channel end there and there to the firewall. And then the little strip of metal on the body right there, which would be the inner wheel well. And then, of course, the tubes. I don't know if I have the tubes in my hands before I lower this. I've been told you put them in before you lower it, but... I've got a trick I've learned that will make this really easy to drop them in since you don't actually fasten them there. They're just guides. Then the heater channel has that uh, carpet guide, I think is what it's called, under the door. That will be the part that will um, line up my door for me. And the doors are strapped shut and there's way too much pinch on them. So what's going to happen is, once the front's in, I can adjust the back here and here by either pulling the car or pushing the car to get the doors shut correct. Once the doors shut correct, I tack and tack and tack and tack and tack and tack, 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 tack until that's in. And then, this cross member probably will fall in the correct place. But I don't know if I'm keeping that, or if I'm replacing it, or if I'm going to repair it. Or keeping it and repair it is the same thing, but you know what I mean. So I don't know if I'm going to chop this off, repair the ends, or, uh, you know, whatever options I have. Because this is going to be the back end of the bus. 
because this little swoop up will it should be the same height as that now um i may just those aren't super expensive they definitely would be a penny that i didn't expect to spend but if i had to buy those i buy those two pieces because they're sold in splits and then i fasten the floor of the bus to that and make it one big long piece because the type 3 motor way back there is way flatter so all i got to do is clear that as of right now my door gap as you can see is really big down here because of that guy it's actually not bad everywhere else and i think i have a piece of weld down here keeping me from shutting the door it's actually not that hard it's not that bad right now um but yeah it's a it's, it's sketchy it's a, it's definitely a, it's definitely a sketchy 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 thing yep there we are this is too high this is just right wish me luck gotta lower the bug so the adjustments my key point is this tube going in this hole and the firewall lining up let's, let's do this Gonna lower it one cinder block at a time. Front, back, front, back. Okay, I don't know what this is balancing on. is working perfectly. Come check this out. Oh yeah. See if you can get a good angle. I don't know if you guys can see it as good as I can. Yeah, there you go. See? It's starting to all line up. See the other side? Oh, close up of the hood. Yeah. There we go, and that's the side I had to chop chop because I didn't know how to get them out. So that's a lot of repairs, but it's straight metal, it's not, you know, it's just going to be part of that repair as well. Okay, let's see what we can do here. And then the back side, of course we all know that hole lines up with that hole, which right now does not look like it's going to happen. Oh yeah, see that guy is... A little too far forward like I can see it I might have to tabby tab on that and flatten that out to move it and then the nose yeah the nose looks like it's good I'm on jack's hand so I can lower him by a click now this one actually looks really lined up that's not bad right there yep tabby tab on that one too yeah I'm gonna have to tabby tab these guys are not lining up but yet that is so I'm gonna have to shift the heater channels back about half an inch it looks like I don't know if you can see the alignment here yeah about half an inch every time oh. okay Basically, this piece right here, come on over, come on over, basically, this bump right here 
this is flat to go underneath here now, but this bump is making it so it probably won't clear this. Its twin is on the other side exactly the same way. It's just not quite kinked enough. I don't know if you can see it, but this bulges out. Not a huge deal. Just didn't realize it whenever I was working on it until now. So I'm only holding this one in with two bolts and the other one with three. So I'm literally going to take them off, hammer that flat, put them back on. It'll only take me a little bit. So I'm not going to bore you with that. There you have it. I took them off, fixed the back metal. Actually, I fixed a little bit of the front metal on the car side. Put them back on both sides. Didn't want to bore you with all that because it was just a lot of me shifting and shifting. I could try to lower it on the teeth. I mean, why not? What I gotta do, right? Gone. <laughs> it literally just fell into place. Oh, that is, yeah. Oh, that's gorgeous. That is freaking beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful. That is really beautiful. Now, the fine tuning begins. That's gonna be the long part, right? Like, holy crap, it's on the piano and the piano looks freaking gorgeous. Come here, check this out. Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that. I'm so freaking excited. Oh, that is the firewall. Look at that. It lined right up perfectly. In fact, that little guy right there looks perfect. I'll have to redo the skirt. But yeah, baby. Oh, that is that is so gorgeous right now. Oh, that's so gorgeous right now. Oh, so freaking happy. And look, it is almost perfect there. Almost, like a millimeter off maybe. Maybe a millimeter. Oh, that guy is just a little bit off as well. And I know it's the whole thing needs to be shifted that way. So the back part here bent like crazy. So this might be a little bit twisted so I can pull it. But I don't think this wheel well bend at all so more than likely that is, that mounting point is probably perfectly okay so what's going on is it's up high because of this metal right here so i'll jack it back up an inch carve the metal see look there we go carve the metal right there focus focus there we go. Carve the metal right there and on its twin side. Boy, this is just not focusing for me. Okay, well, we'll just zoom back out. But you get the point. It's the lip. But that's a weld point, so I don't know if I want to get rid of it entirely. So I'll probably just cut a slit so that it's three layers of metal instead of two. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. The, the arch is almost perfect. You can tell the shift of the arch is slightly that way, which is what we noticed in the two mounting points. So I could probably shift the entire car this way. I have no idea what I'm doing. Never do. I dive in head first and trial by fire every time. But look how gorgeous this is. Yeah, you can tell by that gap compared to this gap, which you can't see over here. That gap definitely at the bottom of the door looks like I need to shift the whole thing this way towards the dry, the passenger side. Oh, this is, this is freaking awesome. Oh, I've been waiting for this. I had to wait a whole week to do this because the weather was so bad. But now I can roll the car back into the garage and really start hunkering down. Huey needs a new rotor and some bearings on the passenger side, which past Jason was a doofus and did not uh, do both rotors at the same time the last time he did brakes. But that was two years ago before I knew better. Oh, this is freaking awesome. Think I'll take a lunch break? And then see if I can get that to shift. Yeah, this is awesome. Had to happen sooner or later. It's 
straps off the doors. Thanks, Stephen, for letting me borrow it. But I couldn't see where things were until I took it off. Now, here's the most amazing part. On this side, the passenger side, this door was the hardest to close with the strap because of the bowing, because it was, you know, it was bowed like up. So that means it was buckling, basically. Ever so slightly. Obviously, it wasn't enough to keep the roof, but it happened. Making this door pinch way too hard down here where this rust is. Now, this already had a kink right here, which means it's had some issues on the door. Um, somebody reefed it open too hard, or the rust in the reefing, like something happened. Obviously, in its past. But here's the amazing part now. The door handle's been removed, but if I go like this, open it as far as I dare to, because that, it actually is really, really nice. It's very close. Ever so slightly pinched right here. Ever so slightly wide right there. Like it is so freaking close, it's ridiculous. Now here's the problem though. The other side that was the easy part to close is now not easy. Um, I had to take more meat off the pillars to get the heater channel out because of the rust. So my theory is that it's now here, as that B pillar, driver's side is sinking. And that makes this whole door on that side droop. Um, yeah. The heater channel itself on that side is also feels like it's like an eighth of an inch, two millimeters back. Uh, even though it's as good as it can get in the front. Um, so that means I'm almost wondering if the whole car is twisted a little bit so that the driver's side is, you know, I don't know. But it's going to take some, some minutia to fix it. Um, but almost every one of my bolt holes lines up now on the back uh, uh, area. And this door makes me so happy. Okay, so plan of attack is, well, the front firewall back together onto the heater channels. And then I'll probably do this corner first. This little section right here onto the heater channel. The uh, gap on this door is a lot smaller than that one over there too. Uh, the So those front bolts, the front bolts on the, the front beam are, the bolts are this way, that means the body shifted driver's side. So that, that makes me think it is twisted. Okay. But man, we're on the pan. I can roll this into the garage now. That's, that's the goal. Like, I'd have to be delicate about it, but I could totally do it. Um, this is, this is really cool. Um, a lot of work to get here. So much more to go. Okay. Also, I can get in and out of the car now so I can adjust things. So that, that makes me very happy. Because I climbed through the back window earlier. That was, that was, I didn't record that. I mean, I don't mind the way people, if people laugh at me, but yeah, that was awkward. <laughs> okay. So. Now, time to weld. I'm gonna have to replace this section. I've already ground it so I can cut it. Trace the new piece, pop the new piece in. Got a big four foot by eight foot sheet of metal in the garage that I'm gonna start using. That's why I wanna move into the garage so I can just boom, 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 boom. Yeah. This is really, this is, this is good. This is, this is very um, yeah. This is cool. 
Very cool. I'm excited. I'm just, my brain's just chugging, trying to figure out every, oh, so much more to go. Like, I'm trying to, like, step by step this whole thing in my head now. Um, I really think I need to pull the B pillars closer so that the B pillar on the driver's side pulls in. And I may just end up, like, I don't know how I'm going to do that properly. Because it's not like I can strap the B pillars together from the bottom. Um, I'm going to have to rig something up, like, maybe I'll to do a toe strap and crank it on the bar that I welded. And I'll remove that cross beam that goes behind the back seat, or behind the front seats in the back seat. I'll remove that bar so I can just ever, ever so slightly. Because that bar has a slot in it, so it it's, gives you a, a, a leeway. So I can move it at least half an inch before it'll it's too small. Um, there's a lot of meat there. And that might have been what happened, is that it stretched while I was working on it when I lifted it up. Oh, this is getting good, 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 good. Alrighty then. But this is, this is, this is, I'm just, I'm, little win, little win, little win. Big step forward, little win. Yes. Of course, I'm going to have to fix the door, but once it's all together, I can take the door off the hinges, fix the door, and put the door back on. Or if I give up, I can buy a new door and use it because I haven't painted it yet. I definitely know where there's some doors. Um, dang, this is cool. Alrighty then. Plus, I keep banging my head on this stupid thing. Four times today alone. One was really hard to. Oh. Usually my whiskers pick it up, but I hit it on the side. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, back to it. There you have it. Long day. I'm running out of daylight and I'm running out of energy. Ran some errands today too, got groceries. But 90% of the day was here. I finally got that side to start to close up. I found out that little guy right there had a bit of metal sticking down in that was pushing on the heater channel, lifting the whole side up. But that door is still tweaked. This side. May look bad, but it actually closes really good. It only comes down like a millimeter, and most of that is because of this, uh, which is easy to fix. So I'll take the door off whenever I'm done with the heater channels. Uh, the bolt holes are 99% there, and then the other bolt hole is 99% there. Oh, I am whooped, but for a good reason. That looks great. Look at that firewall. Turned out perfect. Now, of course, you're all looking at this going, wow, he's got it all lined up, blah, blah, blah. Um, of course, I'm going to have to take this off the, the pan probably two or three more times to get everything finished. Uh, once I get it all welded, then I take it off, make sure that it's all clean and uh, either de-rusted or rust restore or OSFO or whatever I put on there. Then I put it all back on again, and this maybe that time it'll be with the body seal. So, very cool. I also realized these guys had were bent downward making the whole heater channel tilt out uh, so I just grabbed a bar shoved it in there and reefed on it until it bent up straight and that actually fixed a lot of my my gap issue so that was it I started cutting the rust out just gonna grind the egg out of it you probably see the stickers and stuff but I already know that I'm grinding the egg out of it so I didn't care the bolt holes this one doesn't quite line up, but remember, this whole thing is... I mean, 
That one lines up if you want any measurement, but I don't even know if I'm gonna keep that, so we're not. That guy actually lines up perfect. Ha! <laughs> Funny. So does the one on that side, right about there. Um, that's perfect. I think the next step is to weld all this side and back there. And then I'll probably end up removing this cross beam. And then that cross beam, which as you can see is an old bed post. And then I need to, I think, shim this, the A-pillar, up just a smidge to get the pinch out of the door. I think that's too low um, from what I'm seeing. And then as I shim that up, I'm going to push this pillar out just a smidge. Um, we'll see. That's that's what it looks like the game plan is. I don't know if it will be the actual factual attack method, but when I get that shimmed up, uh, it'll prove or disprove my theory that that sh pillar is pushing down and that pillar is not only pulled in, but tweaked up, meaning that this whole thing is drooped right there. Um, I think it got tweaked whenever I was lowering it or raising it or whatever. Um, but that's not a hard thing. Once I lift that a pillar up, it'll either prove or disprove. If it disproves, then I'll, uh, I'll know a lot more about the way the door's tweaked. Um, but right now that pillar is slightly inward. The door is slightly downward. So if I push that out and lift up by shimming that this way and up. There you go. It's not perfect, but once I grind it down a little bit, never said I was a welder. But I'm getting way better. A lot less material, thinner, still doing good. Next, the passenger side. That's probably my best one yet. Uh, the passenger side is 90% uh, done. I still need to do the inside, which I'm going to do after I lift the car back off. Uh, driver's side I have not started on because that's a lot of a door adjustment. But I think I got pretty far today. I got that welded. Started over there. Started working on this little piece, which is way worse than I thought once I poked out all the rust. But... You know, nothing I can't do. And then, now I gotta get over there. The cardboard is for tracing, of course. Slow and steady wins the race, as always. When it comes to this weld. The, uh... Let's make sure there's... Oh, the weld is really hot. Let's, uh, let's fix that. Door still shuts. Pretty darn good. Gap still a little bit on the bottom, but like I said, I can't do 100% stuff until I fix that hinge. Um, that's really what is boiling down to being the problem. Um, it's stretched. Pushes that way, so that's why that's pinched. So I think I'm good there. But, yeah. So there we have it. Lots of work. The, uh, whew getting tired, running out of daylight, and daylight saving time kicked in today. Yay. Wish somebody would turn that off. Um, ooh, pretty sunset. Here we are. Door closes pretty darn good, finally, and I don't even know what I did. Nah, just kidding. Um, it's one of those might be stupid, but it works moments. If it's stupid, but it works. Is it really that stupid? So Jason forgot to pick up shims on the way home from work. So I used what I had. I started sliding in tools that I had. The uh, good old wrench is almost exactly what I need uh, for thickness of up. Um, and it has to be right there. So I'm not going to remove that until I get this whole part and that pillar 
<laughs> done. Um, no, it won't become part of it, but on the flip side, it'll be the very last thing I do. <laughs> and then I've strapped the two poles together, the two pillars, and that seems to be where I need to be. So I'll probably, like I said, I'll finish on that side and that side, making sure that the door stays shutting correctly, not remove the pillar shim, i.e. wrench, right there. And then this guy needs to come up just a smidge and in just a smidge. So I've actually been using this guy, the cross beam here, to shift it. Um, works pretty good actually. This is cool. Almost there. Uh, still need to work on that a little bit more. I cut the patch panel slightly too small. I had to make another patch for the patch. This door is getting closer though. That side's looking good. I need to work on this driver's side a little bit more. Strap that side to that so I could hold them in. But progress is progress, right? Oh, left my flashlight on. Another couple of hours, another good progress. Unfortunately, I think it's going to rain tomorrow or the next day, so i got to clean up everything and cover things with tarps and all that stuff. The inside, I don't want that inside filling with water. You know what I mean? Another day, a little bit more progress. I'm whooped. I think this is going to be the last warm day of the year. Which means I'm probably going to have to move this inside pretty soon. It's supposed to be in the 60s this week. After today, it's 80 today. So, not too hard, but annoying nonetheless. But here we are. I am doing some sketchy balancing to fix the last bit of gap on that door over there. The driver's side um, actually worked really well. It solved all my problems on that door. It's bad, bad, and not. Very cool. Uh, okay, so that was the uh, that was a lot of work to get this far. Um, Thanks for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and click the bell so you can know when I'm uploading a new video. I try to do it once a week towards the end of the week. Uh, make sure you tell all your friends because if you're in the car community, this one's going to be a really cool car. And I love sharing it with you guys. So like, subscribe, and ding the bell. Thanks for watching. Move out of the way. There's a cow. Jeez.